This video is sponsored by TP-Link. As a content creator and architect, I have come to value simplicity above all else. Pursuing both of these passions simultaneously presents unique challenges, particularly in terms of staying focused and productive, despite the constant distractions and interruptions. Because of this, I decided to simplify my workspace and create an environment that encourages productivity and creativity while minimizing clutter and potential distractions. My whole mindset for this revamp was less but better. In this video, I'll be sharing how I optimized my home office to make it more efficient as an architectural workspace, content creation studio, and a place to unwind and spark creativity. The first thing I did was push my desk against the wall to allow myself to have more flexibility in terms of filming. If you guys have seen my recent videos, this shouldn't come off as a surprise. Although I love the new desk orientation, the walnut slats were a bit too much next to the desk, so I decided to take them off and replace them with these panels from wood up. This time, I wanted to install them along this entire wall, which was a bit tricky because I had to cut around the outlets, but I got it done with the help of my brother-in-law. Other than that though, they are pretty easy to install. The panels are relatively lightweight, so I screwed them directly onto the drywall just as I did before. To take things a step further, I decided to remove the baseboard and replace the outlets with black ones. This made the accent wall look much more intentional as opposed to just an afterthought. The black ash wood slats created a nice contrast with my walnut desk, and since the panels panels are set on acoustical felt, it also improved the overall sound in the space. The desk I have is the Walnut Sway desk from Ergon Office. This 30 by 60 inch solid wood tabletop has a beautiful rich color and it's full of character making it a real showstopper. This standing desk uses a swipe function to transition between positions which feels very natural to interact with. It has extra features such as collision prevention and my favorite stand reminders which I have set to 5 minutes of standing per hour. When I'm switching from sitting to standing, the motors are quiet and the desk is very sturdy despite having casters installed. Personally, I love having casters as it allows me to move my desk easily and change things up whenever necessary. To keep my most used tools within reach, I added a desk drawer which matches my tabletop perfectly. To organize all the wires for my desk setup, I am using the cable management solution which makes organizing cables very convenient. With the use of cable ties, I can easily hook any excess cables onto the perforations and this makes adding and removing accessories a non-issue. It comes with an included power strip where I plug in all of my accessories helping me achieve a one-wire setup. I have been using the U2 chair for my main desk setup and I find it to be very comfortable to sit in. The mesh back keeps you cool during long work sessions and the seat and armrests are really comfortable. This chair has a ton of adjustments so I'll leave a video in the cards above if you want to learn more. When I am feeling unproductive or needing to feel more engaged, I like to switch to the Tilt Ergonomics stool. It sits a bit higher, somewhere between sitting and standing, which I find to be enjoyable. Although it is not a replacement for standing, I like it because it can move with you and it is designed to keep you active throughout the day. One of the biggest upgrades I made is to our home network. As a content creator and a business owner, having a fast and reliable internet connection is crucial. That's why I upgraded to the TP-Link Deco XE75 Pro. This tri-band mesh Wi-Fi 6E system provides fast Wi-Fi coverage throughout my entire house, eliminating dead zones and giving me peace of mind anywhere I decide to work or play. Thanks to the AI-driven mesh, the switching from one deco to another is so smooth and unnoticeable. This system can have up to 200 devices, which is great because I don't have to worry about connecting my computers, tablets, gaming consoles, and even smart home devices. When necessary, I can use the app to give higher priority to devices essential for running my business. And if that's not enough, the Pro version has a 2.5 gig port that I can use to take full advantage of my broadband speeds. This means instant access to my file competitive advantage when gaming, and the best experience when consuming content. This makes the Deco XE75 Pro the perfect upgrade to any home network. If you are ready to upgrade your system, don't forget to use the coupon code and link in the description below. The computer I'm using is the 14-inch M2 Max MacBook Pro. Although it runs a bit hotter and at times louder than my previous 16-inch M1 Max, 
I have not experienced any noticeable loss in performance. The size and form factor is really ideal, especially when I'm working on the go. However, about 80% of the time, I have my MacBook Pro dock using an under desk mount. Then I plug it into a CalDigit TS4 dock to connect it to my accessories, such as my speakers and monitor. Last year, I upgraded to the studio display, mainly due to its accurate colors and brightness. This monitor has amazing speakers. However, the built-in webcam is not as great, but it's acceptable enough in a pinch. I chose the Visa version of the studio display so that I can mount it onto my desk, and I just love using monitor arms because it creates a cleaner look and it also frees up desk space. The monitor arm I'm using is from Ergon Office. It's easy to adjust, it has a built-in cable management, and it has a really small footprint while still being sturdy. The wallpaper I'm using is the Wilderness colorway from my Topographical Wallpaper Pack which I'll leave linked in the description below in case you want to support the work that I do. On top of my monitor, I have a BenQ light bar, which I've had since 2020. I love this version since it has the controls built in, which means less clutter on my desk. Having a light bar is great for working at night or during the dark winter months. It helps me light up my desk so I can refer to documents, and it also helps with eye strain. For my webcam, I'm using the Insta360 Link. This webcam shoots 4K, 30 frames per second, and it's set on a 3-axis gimbal. This allows the camera to move and keep me in frame using AI tracking features, which I can easily access using gesture controls. I can put my hand up for active tracking, and I can also zoom in and out by holding up an L. The Insta360 Link's picture quality is much better than that of the studio display, so it's what I use for most of my meetings. If I'm doing any kind of recording, then I use my FX30. On either side of my monitor, I have the U4 Canto speakers, which I have set on eight inch speaker stands. The U4 produces crisp and clear sound that I find enjoyable for consuming content and listening to music. It has a decent sound stage and enough bass in my opinion. And if I ever need to make adjustments to the sound, it also comes with a remote that makes it really easy to do so. On my desk, I have a light gray wool desk mat from Grovemade, which I use as a mouse pad for my MX Master 3S. I love this mouse, it has quiet clicks, programmable buttons, and a thumb scroll that comes in really handy, especially for video editing. For my keyboard, I keep going back to the MX Mechanical Mini, just because I do think a wireless setup is just so much cleaner. But every now and then, I switch to my custom build mode Sonnet. Below my monitor, I have several accessories. I have this Govee temperature and humidity monitor. I have a Grove Mid pen and notepad for writing quick notes and ideas. And I am using the Gather Organizer set from Ugmong to hold my analog cards, pens, and a MagSafe phone stand. Next to my desk, I have the knee filing cabinet to store important tools and documents. And on the right is a ladder shelf where I have some books, a few personal items displayed, and a bottom drawer for some of my drawings and files. In order to have more storage in my home office, I decided to replace the cubby I had with this sideboard from All Modern. This change gives me flexibility and room to store different sized things, plus it also looks better. I decided to keep the top of this sideboard simple and minimal. I want to use this to showcase some products, do unboxings and whatnot, so I see this changing depending on my needs at that time. For now, I have this gather monitor stand and a wool desk mat, which I'll be using to take a few photos for social media. To have easy access to the outlet, I mounted a U-Green charging station for when I need to plug in some accessories and charge my batteries. On the left cabinet, I store products that I have yet to open and things that I don't use regularly. This allows me to keep things private, especially when they are not ready to be shared yet. In the middle, I have some clear storage bins which I labeled, and below, I have two metal baskets for commonly used tools for filming. I can simply grab the smaller basket for a typical filming day and a bigger basket for for things that I only need once in a while. On the right side, there are discrete drawers where I store my camera batteries, office tools, and more. Since I like to keep boxes of gear that I'm currently using, I wanted a place to store them. After analyzing my space, I had the idea to mount metal shelves on top of the window. I decided to get it in white so that it blends better with the window and walls and to prevent it from grabbing too much attention. This simple addition gave me enough storage to store those boxes and it was honestly so satisfying. I also got the Nanlite Pavo tube with magnetic lips so I can easily mount it under the shelves and use it as a task light while still being able to use it for filming. On the opposite wall, I kept the Philippines map that I got from East of Nowhere. 
I just really love this map. It serves as a great reminder of my life there. And on the right, I added some floating walnut shelves to store my headphones, a few lenses, books, and plants. Speaking of plants, one of my goals this year was to incorporate real plants in my home office. The first plant I got is a bird of paradise, which I think looks very elegant and dramatic and it's perfect for this corner. Currently, it's enjoying the sunlight it's getting from the long summer days, but I also installed a hanging grow light because I know the winter days will be harsh for this tropical plant. I also added a couple of pothos around my home office, one on top of this ladder shelf, which is super luscious and looks really beautiful, and I have two others that I'm still waiting to grow. Adding plants give my space so much life, and I love how it looks. My gaming setup pretty much stayed the same. I have not found a reason to change or upgrade anything but if you want to learn more you can check out the setup in the cards above lastly i repainted this wall and removed the tv because it just added clutter and distraction in my space which was unnecessary i decided to keep this wall plain and simple until a solid idea comes to mind but honestly i'm kind of liking this minimal vibe Optimizing my home office is crucial for creating a workspace that is efficient, functional, and conducive to productivity and creativity. Although I consider this iteration of my home office simply a refinement of what I had before, it still took a lot of work. It involved carefully assessing my needs and making strategic changes to the layout, design, and organization of the space. As an architect, I always try to be intentional with my designs, and this is even more true now as a content creator, as my home office not only serves as a workspace, but is also a part of my work itself. Because of that, I know this space will continue to evolve. If there was something in this video that caught your eye, be sure to check the links in the description, and if you made it this far in the video, type optimize in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.